Hello there everyone and welcome back to how to make a mod in Team Mod Loader. This is going to be one of the final five episodes that I'm covering. We're going to be doing some global properties, so editing existing vanilla items and uh, NPCs and whatnot, and changing how certain values work. So what we're going to be doing is first of all creating a uh global items class which is going to modify the copper short sword so let's start with this so i'm going to create a class called modified copper short sword and then what we need to do is extend global item make sure that's imported let's make this public and we're going to make it only apply to the cop short sword so override apply to entities what we're going to do is entity dot type is equal to item id we're going to do the copper short sword this means it can only apply to the copper short sword so if we override the set defaults we can now change a number of the variables so we need to tell Terraria our mod is going to be modifying the item so we're going to do entity dot stats modified by then dot add and we want to put in mod and now we can edit the value so we're going to make the copper sword do let's say 50 damage uh, let's make the knockback very little and let's also change the damage type and we'll change it to a magic instead of melee. So our copper short sword now deals up to 50 damage, has low knockback, and is now a magic weapon. So let's just get rid of these. But maybe you want to modify multiple. So we can create a new class, uh, multiple modified items and again extend global item make that public this time we want to make it apply to multiple items so we can override the applies to entities again but this time we do return entity dot type switch and open parentheses we're going to do copper pickaxe set that to true copper axe set that to true but default is set to false so we just use underscore for that. Then again, we could do uh, set defaults. But this time we do if entity dot type is equal to item ID dot copper pickaxe. We then edit the values. As you can see here. And then you can do the same for the X, copper X. So that's how you can modify multiple items. You can also 
give certain items melee effects. So I'm going to do if item dot type is equal to item id dot copper axe. We're going to make it produce some dust. If main dot van dot next ball. Go do dust dot new dust. New vector two at hitbox dot x. Hitbox dot y. Hitbox dot width. Hitbox dot height. Gonna do dust id dot and we'll chuck in uh let's do silver silver flame and we'll do let's make the x speed be zero f and make it fall slightly by doing 0.65 f And we can also create a new recipe. Oops. For let's do our copper pickaxe. So we're gonna do recipe dot create. Our result is item ID dot copper pickaxe. We then can do dot add ingredient. We'll do We'll make our dirt blocks. Need ten of those. Still have copper bars, but only need one. Make it so you can use it in workbenches. And register. So that's a simple way you can create a new recipe. I'm gonna just split this across different lines so it's more readable and yeah so this should only apply to these this will apply to the copper axe it will create dust and we've added a recipe for the copper pickaxe so let's move over to the uh, NPCs so next thing we could do is modify NPC loot. So what I'm going to do is create a class called uh, loot global NPC. This extends global NPC. Make that public. This time we're going to override uh, modify NPC loot. For this we're going to Make it so a zombie can drop a new item, a uh, slime can drop an item, and so forth. So we do if npc dot type is equal to npc id dot zombie. We're going to give it a twenty five percent chance to drop some angel wings. So we're going to do npc loot dot add item drop rule. Which you'll need to make sure you have the using directive for. Make it common. Item ID dot angel angel wings. And that's gonna be a four. So our zombie will have twenty five percent chance to drop. If I can spell, there we go. But what if we want to make a NPC drop only during the day? Well, what we can do is go into our drop conditions folder and create a new, uh, we'll call it day drop wall. And this extends i 
item drop vol condition. Make that public. And we need to inherit all this stuff. So in the can drop, we can do if not info dot is in simulation return main dot daytime return false which i believe this is the way you're meant to do it let's get rid of that double uh can show item drop in ui set return true for this Git condition description. I'm just going to do return drops during the day. So that's literally all you need for this. It's very basic. Uh, so we're going to make it drop our custom items. So we're going to make it drop our. We'll make it drop our tutorial item. Actually, we'll drop tutorial bar. Uh, so if mpc.type is equal to mpc id dot blue slime, we can do mpc loot dot add, and it is, if I remember correctly. Item drop rule dot by condition and we do new day drop rule. Our item ID is going to be mod content dot item type of tutorial bar. Uh, that one, yep. It's going to be a 100%. We're going to make it drop between 3 and 6. So that's how we can modify the NPC loot. But what if you want to modify the NPC shops? I'm going to create another class called Shop Global NPC. Again, extend Global NPC. And this time we're going to apply it only to one entity so applies to entity like we did before we do entity dot type is equal to uh, mpc id dot we'll do demolitionist so override modify shop So let's give the demolitionist some new items. So we're going to do shop dot add new item. And we're going to do item ID. And we're going to do some day bloom because we're going to give the demolitionist some flowers. Blink group. And Minglo. But what if we want to have a custom price for it? What we can do is shop.add new item. We're going to do it to the Minglo again. But this time, we want to put some parenthesis in. Do shop custom price is equal to and we'll do 15 so that will allow us to modify our demolitionist shop so assuming everything has gone correctly this should work and let's test the game so now that we're in Terraria we can test to make sure that our copper pickaxe, copper axe, and our short sword work. So, first of all, we modified the short sword. 
So it does 53 magic damage. It's very fast speed and extreme weak knockback. And you also got to see the uh, slime drop our oh, item. So let's spawn in the blue slime. So we can also show the day act. So, yep, you see that we got some bars. Our copper axe is very slow speed but very powerful so we basically just one punch the trees and then our pickaxe as you can see is extremely fast and should be able to mine stuff without issue so let's spawn in some Obsidian. And our pickaxe should be able to mine it. So now we want to switch to day, if I can remember how to do it. Uh, is it that one? It's not that one. I don't think I have the other mod installed. Ah, here we go. So, change to noon. I should change to night. There we go. Because as you can see, that slime didn't drop uh, some stuff. Let me actually turn the brightness up so you can see a bit better. Let's spawn in. Oops. Let's not do that one. Spawn in a few blue slimes, and if we kill them all, you can see none of them dropped the tutorial bar. Let's bring in the zombie a few times. Uh, just do this. As you can see, one of them dropped angel wings. So the final thing we did was the demolitionist whose shop should now be customised. He spawned in. Yep, there he is. Let's just talk to you. So as you can see, he now has Daybloom for 95 copper, Blink Root for 95, Moonglow for 95 and Moonglow for 14 copper. which we can sell back and make a profit. Just by doing this. Break the economy. But yeah, that's how you can modify uh, items and NPCs. This can extend to projectiles and other aspects of Terraria. Uh, you can find out more on the uh, Tmod Loader uh, GitHub and their example mod. There are plenty of examples on there. Uh, this will just show you how you could do it with items and NPCs. But yeah. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Uh, we have four more episodes after this. And they're going to take some time to do because I need to refresh myself. Our next one is going to be on some world generation. I'm going to show you how to place uh, blocks in the world, how to use an array to create your own sort of structure, as well as some um, basic understanding of how you can create a biome and stuff in Terraria. So thank you for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. Till the next one. Goodbye.